Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Old World Blues. I'm your host, Mr. McCullover, in which we are playing as Nueva Aztlan, which I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but regardless, before we get too far, the mods we're using for this campaign, for this special campaign, I should say, is State Chancellor Tool Mod, Player Life Peace Conferences, Old World Blues, and Old World Blues Radio. Only four mods, but we must begin with a focus. That's Aztlan, the life bringer. Legends say that the first speaker saw the bombs fell and led her people through a dying world to the fallen city of Xochicalco. They lived when so many others had perished. And as you can see, I've already set up our generals already. And... Oh, caps. Uh, we've already, I've already played 3.0, so we have a whole one cap, but reclaiming destiny. Some of those who follow the life bringer turned to the old ways, seeing her as a prophet who walked the same paths as the Nahualtel had. Her skulls were confirmed again when the Korachas came from the north, monsters under an eagle banner. They broke into a military base near Xochicalco and tried to steal a Garden of Eden creation kit. Oh. But the Lifebringer foresaw their arrival, although skeptics say she heard the Kukarachas broadcasting in un on an unencrypted channel. She reclaimed the Gek and used it to heal the world. Kukarachas? Is that just cockroaches? Huh. She used a gek on Xochicalco. Oh, we get life bringers, stability, and war support, and civilian workshops. She used a gek on the lands of the early empire. You get stability, just life bringer. Uh, oh, and then you get some infrastructure. She used a gek on Mexico City. You get more war support, which I kind of like. Uh, do we more war support, stability? Uh, hmm. I like the civilian workshops of Mexico City itself. So that's. Oh, that's Mexico City up here. Zochicalco. Ooh, it's three infrastructure. Honestly, right now, we're, I'm building up infrastructure just because our national spirits actually hurt us when we're trying to build civilian factories right now. But I'm thinking, you know what? Let's maybe grab some... Uh, let's do Mexico City. Why not? Well, I'll do Mexico City because we can. The Liberator. While some nations hold men and women in bondage, the, Az the Azlan emancipated their slaves. Thanks. Because it was the just thing to do. And because Empress had a bad dream and were currently led by Speaker Yesenia Atzlano. Oh, oh, oh boy, this is a speaker. Not very good. Oh, we're actually losing political power. Oh boy, I should have got more stability then. My bad. And we currently have minimal exemptions. Ah, yes. I, I'll be honest, I have not played this off screen yet. This is my first time playing as Nueva Atzlan, so I'm going to be making some mistakes here. It is what it is. Oh well. The Liberator of Adslan. The Liberator is said to have a dream in his youth in which he saw the Empire crumble due to a slave revolt, spreading like a flame across the Imperial Banner. To stop this, he emancipated the slaves upon ascending the throne. The Liberator used his cry of Liberated to conquer towns throughout Mexico, bringing them into the Empire with the aid of the people. In a dream after one conquest, he saw the future again. A flame spread across Mexico, but now it was spread by those who once wore chains marching under the Imperial Banner. He saw those men shorn of shackles marching forth in the name of Adslan. They wave the banner of the Feathered Serpent, we get Hernando Maroto, and we get more speed, the vision recovery, rate, and surrender limit, or they wave the banner of the Flayed Man, organization, attack, and the defense on court territory. So we got Gabriel Fraga, which sounds kind of familiar. Ooh, surrender limit, uh, they wave the banner of the Flayed Man. Very cool. And then we should have the legislator. The Atzlan Empire is governed by a complex code of laws cementing its quasi-feudal society. These govern both how the Atzlan treat inferiors and foreign tributaries. So, and I'll let you know, for this campaign we are on historical because I've never played as Atzlan, Nueva Atzlan at all, so I want to know what kind of happens to the station. The legislator. As the world began to recover from the Great War, and the Atzlan Empire rose above local warlord level, one of the speakers realized the Empire needed a formal legal code. The jo Josefina, or Josefina Code synthesized pre-war Mexico's legal system with the rough and ready justice that arose since the war, imposing obligations and privileges upon the people of the Empire. The code provided a safety valve for the desperate by letting them declare bankruptcy and enlist in the Atzlan army, and codified Costa Cafinada's position in the Empire. Okay, so sometimes, I'm just looking, checking here real quick, that when we begin a campaign, sometimes we're like really low on our, uh, the amount of people we're mobilizing, but we're pretty much we're right where we're supposed to be at. Effective total manpower modified to 38%, which is, oh my goodness. The Wasp Act gave the Empire's plentiful warriors. Ooh! Oh, that's nice. The Treaty of Oshakoka. Oshakoka? I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish and I don't, I, know, I don't know how to pronounce a lot of these words in Mexico, so I'm doing the best here. The Treaty... I don't know which one's historical. Ooh. Consumer goods factories, resource efficiency gain. We actually get civilian factories, arms workshops, trade. Uh, I kind of like this one. I like the population. We have a lot of bodies. I love the bodies. The Lost. The fourth speaker was among the greatest leaders of the nation, but his time was tragically 
cut short. Oh boy. And let's talk about the natural spirits. The inefficient agricultural practices, which, which I kind of didn't realize that they had, which is not very good. We also have Atslan Warfare, which is not very good, especially for infantry. Recruitable population. Oh, the Flower Wars. We get more daily army XP. We lose weekly manpower, which I forgot about. I have played the in Itza, but I don't remember a whole lot about them. Uh, enemy occupation of La Tumba Compartida, which is not very good. As well as enemy occupation of Ella Uchben Tsoun. And we occupy Mexico City, of course. Oh, uh, we have the Brutish Operatives. Okay, interesting. More damage to Gearsons, though. Ooh, Lifebringer's not bad, of course. The Banner of the Flayed Man. And Wasps, which just looks really good. And then additional intelligence reforms. Cool. The Wrath of the Old Rule. The last speaker was the greatest, but like the hummingbird who flew too high, he reached for the sun and perished. The speaker thought he could invade territory under the control of Klaloc, refusing to believe that the aging AI, AI could stop him. The speaker was wrong. He and his wife perished in battle, along with 10,000 Aztlan warriors. When Klaloc dropped a nuke on forces in Camino a los Aztecas, the defeat threw the empire into chaos and it left his great works unfinished. Oh, good lord. The last speaker knew the world was changing. Tlaloc had shielded Mexico, but he had kept it trapped in amber. No great warlord could oppress our land, but no great hero could save it, either. Pursuing the orders of a long-dead world, Tlaloc kept Mexico weak and divided, protecting Mexico by crushing any force too powerful as a guerrilla element. But as it began to fail, opportunities beckoned. The ships of Costa Cafenada brought word of bears and bulls, while the Mayans enter er, emerged from the jungles to menace the land. To survive, the Aztlan would have to become more than an empire. It would have to become a nation. Too bad his, pl his plans perished and a mushroom cloud. He left the nucleus of a professional army, get even more population. Ooh, army XP gained daily. Ooh, he left the seeds of higher learning. You lose population, you get, oh, less max command power. Oh, higher learning, who needs to learn? Oh, professional army, I, oh. Research advisors, we already get military theorists though, probably. Conventional warfare in this, Santo Laguna. Also, we do have four research slots, so that's actually really cool. Daily army speed, but even more population. It's just, it's just, ah, I don't want to lose any more population. Even though we already have a really good amount of population. Like, Mexico is filled with men. Uh, I'm going to go with more population for this campaign. We might play New York Atlanta several times, just because there's different ways you can go down with this group. So, the gathering of Xochicalco. When the bombs fell, refugees fled to the ruins of one of, the, of Mesoamerica's greatest cities, Xochicalco. Which I'm sure I'm saying wrong, but hey, it is what it is. I don't know. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what we have down here. What do we have? Economic advisors. Jimena Rodriguez. I always say X is like a shh sound. A caravan reformer. That's not terrible. Forge Lord. Looks kind of cool. Caravan trader. It's alright. Captain of industry. Head position. Eyes of the speaker. So, I'm gathering is those. Chicago. The speakers gather the leaders of the empire today for a conference. Each of them has its own dreams and hopes. Yesenia dreams of uniting the empire under her rule. All Lotl thinks more power should be granted the wealthy to the wealthy and powerful in the empire, and if they reward, they will support his dream of conquest and a lower marginal tax rate. And Kuahultil Tli and his jaguar nice dream of an empire where any can rise to the top, including our own backward tribals. And of course, there is Kincaid, the poor descendant of the Cucarachas. Why can't you just all get along and do as I tell you? And the wards of lore. The Lords of War. The Jaguar and Eagle cults are terms used for the Empire's professional army. Far from religious fanatics, they have an esprit de corps that the Legion would envy. And we have a... Ooh, guys are... Ulysses Barnum. That sounds very... Mexican. Very, very Mexican. <laughs> ah, la Fuerza Especial. So I'm going to assume that's like special forces. Imperial cults. The Eagle and Jaguar knights see themselves as heirs to the elite warriors of the Aztec Empire, who can, and who can blame them? Equipped with husbanded power armor and heavy weaponry. They are a terror on the battlefield, but to equip these troops, the Aztlan sacrifice elsewhere. Peasant conscripts are equipped with pipe guns and machetes. And imperial supply lines bring luxuries to the front instead of basic rations. If the Aztlan ever reform their military, it would, could be a threat to the rest of Mexico. Good luck giving imperial knights to give up fresh quetzal feathers. Yes. Yes. The Lords of Trade, the Baron of Costa Cafenada, has spread its tentacles through the Atlan economy. Some people will just like this. You say tentacles, and I instantly think of something else. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways. And the other Lord of the Sea, the red-headed stepchild of the Atlan, the navy is full of impoverished nobles and rich commoners who aren't welcome in imperial cults. The coffee baron looking behind the ever-wicked deal. Every corrupt official is Baron Garcia. He wheels and deals and extended loans with such favorable terms that many still wonder why his fingers are in every enchilada. I've not had enchiladas in a long time. I, get, I should get some. To this day, some are still not sure how a man who started selling coffee after nuclear war became the one to place his grip on Mexico's economy. It mostly comes from controlling trade routes. 
The coffee. Oh, I should have got coffee for this campaign, for this episode. It's kind of handsome. The frogs, huh? But an omen of destruction. Tlaloc has ruled Mexico like a distant god, strangling Atslan even as he warded them from the northern threats. But even a god must die. The Frogarinos. While the ways fear the awesome majesty of the Jaguar Knights and the endless ways of Atslan conscripts, the Atslan Navy is known by the trouble as the Frogs. The Navy is home to the misfits of Atslan society, including descendants of Norte Americanos who tried to steal a geck after the war. So then, second daughters and third sons and merchants who think they bleed just as well as any pompous noble. Nobody takes it that seriously, but Admiral Kincaid has plans to show the world that even a frog can kill with the right poison. Sorry, more about that guy in power armor. Uh, actually, I was. We need to get a navy. We have no ships, which really, really sucks. I'm trying to build some canoe hulls, but it is what it is. So, yeah, I don't know anything about Nueva Atslan except that they have a little thing, a little kerfuffle, as Alex Rambler would say, with the Chichen Itza. Did you ever. Do you think we could ever get Alex Rambler to play in Mexico in Old World Blues? How many times has actually played Old World Blues? That's a good question. I've played a few times. But, the death of the Thunderer. It comes in a dream to the Empress, a barrage of thunder, a scream that breaks a mountain, a pillar of fire across the horizon. A bull in the palace is garden, and circling above an eagle of stone, she wakes up in a sweat, oblivious to the darkness, for she traded her vision for a sight a long time ago. Oh, the Emperor shall speak again. Oh boy. Oh no, 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 no. Do I have to choose now the Jaguar's decree among the southern tribes? Tribal modernization, so Jaguar reforms. What's the Jaguar's decree? Ooh. The way to prepare for the future is to bring the entire nation together. Atslan shall leap forward like a jaguar and bring his people out of darkness. Versus Imperial Decree. The Speaker has decreed its time to end our feuding and the rally to the mo mother of the nation. What the noble privilege. The Eagle Knights and Jaguar Wards have served us well enough to date. Why mess with success? Bribery among these guys. All technocracy, settling doubts, brewing up rebellion, call the chieftains, the hidden armories, the total recall, the jaguar hunts. I don't think we'll go down this route just because I already chose that like we get less research speed, so let's not go that way. Oh man, I forgot which update came out with Nueva Atzalan, but there's a lot here. Or quite a bit, I should say. Imperial Decree, Royal Reforms, Imperial Army Reforms, Foreseen Victories, Autocracy, I'm not really sure which one's historical. <laughs> the Bitter Brew, Salt Upon Wounds. That's a leader of the White Legs, right? Hmm. La Tierra de los Totsales Court Territories, I like that, and, or Noble Privilege. The Noble Reformation, Over Investment, I kind of like that. Bribing the Mayors, Estate Expansion, Approach to the Itza, it's your problem now. Threaten the Landlords, Meeting with the Baron, Approach Kincaid, the Eagle Strikes. Well, since I'm focusing on a professional army, I want to go with maybe the Noble Privilege, maybe. The Eagle Knights and Jaguar Warriors have served us well enough to date. Why mess with success? I want to be very aggressive. I want to get all of Mexico under us. Lots and lots of bloodshed, and actually, how are we doing? We need some more guns. Okay, so here's a weird thing uh, about this. So we have two different things. We've got the Jaguar Cult, and we've got the Eagle Cult. Oh, wait, we're going to be in Civil War, aren't we? Ooh. Yeah, sometimes we see these guys in a Civil War, which is not very good. Um, that's probably going to happen. Mm. Hmm. Well then. Regardless. Uh, we have the Jaguar Cult, which has special forces, but they have a thing of power armor fire teams in here. Very weird. Very, very weird. Alright, whatever. And then we have the Eagle Cult, which is 12, 10 combat width. So, yeah. Even though we're, uh, we can make power armor divisions, technically, so... Usually, I like to leave it up to you guys. We're... Oh. Well, since we are usually go... We're not going down the, you know, the more advanced route. Should we use power armor in this campaign? Um, we are using the noble... Pri you know, going down noble privilege. Should we use normal special forces for this one? At least for me, that makes a little bit more sense. Especially since we're trying to get oligarchy. And that one's the eagle cult, so... We'll see. I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Special forces or power armor. And to inform your decision... We currently have uh, power armor is not really that advanced, so uh, the art of nation building is usually a thankless one, but today is not the case. The people of Costa Cafanana seem to have taken to the royal subject wonderfully, and our officials are welcomed, and our demands are met, and hearts and minds are being won to our cause. It's wonderful to fi finally see eye to eye, or let's use this to our advantage. I want to get some more peepee. -pee. Who cares about their stability or stuff right there? Oh, ceasefire! Oh, yeah, see we have ceasefire. We like about read about the flower wars. Go right ahead. We can begin reforms. Our operatives are quite poorly trained, making their discovery and capture almost inevitable. We'll need to review our infiltration procedures going forward. Ooh. Um, clamp down on autonomy. I would like to get some more stability first. Is there anyone here? What do we have for... Uh, Felix Sins? Not bad. Brown Water Terror? Not bad, either. 
Strong as a Lerma. Oh, I knew a girl's last name was Lerma. Oh. Uh, more Divi. Oh, look at that. More attack and piercing. We like piercing. Cultural advisors Langley. Uh, speaker for the people. Gustavo Santella. All right. Kuali Speyer. Stability. Carlos Oban. And Flower Child. Oh, we'll probably choose Arturo Geosa. Uh, Giamen Rodriguez. Of course, like we said earlier. No oh, well, as the speaker has Imperial Decree, which we don't have. Uh, not bad, not bad, not bad. Yeah, I'd like to get more political power. We can only get minus point two every day. Oh my goodness. Hmm, that hurts. Let's go with the noble reformation. The greatest leaders of the empire, it's nobles. Why should they risk their lives when we have so many peasants? You know what? I'm gonna get this first. Uh, let's do less research speed. I want to get more stability. I can do that too. And we also have our uh, capital as a trade note, so which is really nice. Zhou Kikalko. Zhou Kikalko. Is it Z sound or is it like a CH? Because usually with a, like the Chinese provinces when you play as China are more like X equals like SH in like English or something like that. So. Like this is the last time I checked. Kind of want to begin, begin reforms too though. We'll see what happens. Oh, there goes. Oh, yes. Agriculture. And for the land doctrine. Well, already on conventional warfare. I kind of wanted to do asymmetric warfare. Because it makes it maybe a little bit more sense. Do ancient tactics maybe. Wedge formations, even though they say ancient tactics, this seems a bit, maybe a little bit too Roman for us. Wasteland tactics might be really good for us. Mm, mm. Enforcer is not bad. Army break plus twenty percent is not bad either. Uh, I guess we'll probably death claw. Man, if we could feel death claws, that'd be so nice. I suppose we'll go down with conventional warfare and trooper warfare since we are technically a nation. We're not like a tribal nation at all, so. Wow, look at that manpower. Wow, we, we I went way with a lot of manpower. And we did go with this one, so. We can do Eagle Reforms and get bonuses to our land auction. Princely Integration. Tepic? Every time I see the word Tepic, I think of the Pokemon Tepic. Ah, oh, fire Pokemon. The Serpent's Nest. Let's see, Fortifying the Spies. These are okay, these are okay. Empower the Nobles? I, no, that's on Warfare with Cult Supremacy. Lose a little bit more recruitable population factor, but get more attack and defense, which I do like. Also, guard regulations okay. Fortified stuff. The Lords of Atsalan. Alright, not too bad, not too bad. Anything on the right side here? Let's see. Fund urban development. We will do that eventually. Tool procurement is pretty nice. And let's grab some seed selection. And I should probably do some more infantry stuff too. Oh god. The political power is not very good. This hurts our construction speed too. Mm, 30,000 map. Yeah, I love the manpower, but it might just be a bit too much. This will be done very soon, actually, about in a month, which is not bad. And we'll be done here soon. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't click in it. more more on this stuff, but whatever. All right, so after this one, capital reform, royal renovations, which is over there, yeah, and tribal modernization efforts, which means among the southern tribes, which is fine. So we can't do this. We can't do this. Which I should have looked at this uh, infrastructure. Eh, that seems okay. A hundred flowers bloom. Tepic. Uh, no, no, no. Zochicalco. The empire is beating hot, but the way we're going is noble entitlements, which is okay. It looks all right. Definitely a mixture of stuff there. The Urapan city state. The labor lords of Puerto something. Uh, houses of trade and noble supremacy. I love supremacy. Cool. Uh, Igor forms land doctrine. The memories of empire. Oh, political repercussions. Despite our best efforts to deny a small scale conflict for Ella Uch Ben Tsoun, it seems that we simply failed to create the momentum needed to justify an attack like this. In light of such circumstances, we're forced to step down unless we risk a full scale conflict. Defeat in enemy hands would have been kind of than this. Whoopsie. Uh, state expansion. Sorry, I'm just looking at other stuff right now, so. Um, hmm. Over investment. Oligarchy. Blood pact. Well, let's go and do estate expansion. I'll do overinvestment. A leader must care for his people and substitute as small business ventures. All right, so what do we got over here? Ceasefire on the border? What, what is this? Tensions on the border. Oh, well, it's supposed to happen over here? Well, I didn't. I should have realized that I should have clicked on this. Minor skirmishes, eh? And those are special forces, so... Hmm, mm, that's getting some money. It's kind of nice. All right, let's take a look at our divisions. So these guys are, we have quite a few divisions that are eight combat with. Clamanil? Clamani? 12 combat with, how much do we not have? Oh my goodness, can't make anything. 
Uh, I think this was also auto set up by the game when we started, so we'll do that. Uh, that stuff is okay for now. Anything else here? Scrap gun trucks we're not going to use. It's kind of cool that we already have them, though. Anti tank we're definitely going to have to use. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're not, and we're using that as well. Yeah, there it is. And we have no planes. Actually, do we have research for planes? Tech levels. Planes, planes, planes. Aircraft. Eh, medium levels, not too bad. Rural technologies, we are civilized. Anything on the right? Nope. Anything down here? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. We should be working as needed. And then we're probably going to grab some warrior training, perhaps? That sounds like a pretty good idea. There we go. And then... Oh, we could grab this. How's our plane situation? Gliders? Why not? Still mobilizing more. Wow. Uh, if we do this, it's going to take until literally next year, so that's why I'm not even doing that yet. Actually, what would it be like if I tried to make one in Mexico City? Uh, just keep just keep making more factories in Tepic for now. That's fine. And then overinvestment gives us 50 more political power, which would be nice. Uh, bribing the mayor's estate expansion. Well, maybe we'll do some ego reforms. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. An eagle cannot hatch from a chicken egg. Very descriptive. But we'll do it anyways. Alright, not bad. And we're slowly losing more political power. Uh, mm, so, how do we begin flower wars? I think it has to take place between us and these guys, so... I can't exactly remember. Some of you guys will know definitely better than I do because I don't even remember this. I played as these guys so long ago. And I don't see any decisions to click on buttons around here either, so. No clicky. There we go. Seat selection is nice. Let's grab some improvised tools. Not bad. And right now, everyone, we currently have the border war in which we are defending Mexico City from the evils of the Chichen... It's uh, led by Calonte Sebastian II, which hopefully we will win. And they can't pierce us so far, which is a pretty good thing, but currently we're doing princely integration, in which the Aztlan elite can be formally inducted into the Empire's armed forces. We, of course, finished up the overinvestments, of course, so leader cares for his people. But after this, after the princely integration, maybe we shall empower the noble cults. Uh, get more attack and defense for everybody, which is pretty nice. How do we do that one? That sounds pretty good. Oh, the eagle strikes. Fly like an eagle. Hmm. Let's do estate expansion. The empire will run better if we let estates crush the inefficient smallholders. The surplus peasants can ser serve in the wasps. In which, right now, we're already doing this anyways. Get it to the bottom since we're going to have to raise it up later on anyways. Now it's finally time maybe for us to make some factories. It's going to take 11 months. It's such a long time. But at least we're doing okay in our border war, right? Uh, warrior training is pretty good. Let's grab some of this and reference manuals. Oh, looking pretty good so far, and hopefully we will take the initiative. Border on the, the victory on the border. With merry moods and hardened hearts, our brave Aztlan warriors returned from the conquest of Mexico City. Though this conquest was not without loss, it brought with it great gain in the everlasting struggle with our eternal rivals. Bring the spoils back to Xochicalco. Good, at least we won that one. And, oh, was it really six? Is that all we had? Uh, maybe it was all six. It's all right. Cool. And, we're still losing political power. Oof. This does not feel good, man. I swear, this does not feel good. Now, since we won, we have to wait a little bit. Oh, we have to wait quite a few months for that to actually happen, which is totally, totally okay. And now, Costa requests military support. While our relationship with Costa Cafna has been tense over the last few years, they still remain our vassal and we their protector. An envoy from the compounds has asked for increased military support in the form of arms and tactics training to bolster the inadequate forces. While it may be costly, ignoring their request may cause them to drift away from us even further in an event we cannot stop them. If they can fight, they can fight for us. Alright, not bad. Um, a perfunctory military mission will suffice. Weekly, we, they do get weekly war support. Or oh, we don't have time for this. Uh, I kind of like that one. But you can have a little bit of manpower. That's fine with me. Totally, totally fine. Right now, we have a ceasefire on the border. And we are doing a different focus. Because I've already gone ahead and finished up Empower the Noble Colts. 
uh, the Atslan nobility are descended from the speakers. They are worthy of honor, too, which helped us out with more attack and special forces cap, but right now we're bribing the mayors. The way to win Atslan support is through its cities, and the more importantly, through the men and women who control them. And also, I went over and got a cup of coffee. Oh, we actually have this one available. Fund the Navy, Pueblo City Dock Expansion, Kincaid's Naval Evolution, and the Serpent Rises. Not bad. Movement on the border. Report from the border from the front tail of Warring Tail. Enemy troops are being relocated to the borders of Mexico City. This is far too close to our borders to just be routine training exercises. Our treacherous neighbors must be preparing an attack. To arms, an attack is imminent. Tensions on the border. Minor skirmishes on the borders recently began escalating into small scale combat. A border war seems to be breaking out on the border with Chichen Itza Empire at any moment now. It will be aborted if I want to click this. When selected, movements on the border. The following will occur when this mission completes. Start the border war between us and them. Well, I definitely don't want to lose. Ooh, they must be training some more. Ooh, prerequisite. Well, board if has been seized. If not selected. If not selected. It starts a border between us and them. And it, get a new mission and we get a biplane fighter. Sign me up. Triplane attackers. Just because they're so good. And you can still attach them to your army. Not a bad idea. We have plenty of this. Go and do that too because we always need more guns. And I need to make sure that these divisions actually are something else. Yeah, I got a lot of these divisions which are just not that great. So let's do that. We need 500 more infantry equipment. And now, I guess, we're attacking them. Oh boy. Gabriel Fraga. Okay, alright. Let's see. Let's go with Ninja. For more land out attack. Uh, reconnaissance. Do they have any recon? Yeah, they do have a little bit of recon. Of course, recon companies helps out. More land out attack as well. Lots of land out attack. Hopefully we can win. Can they pierce us? No, they cannot, which will hopefully help us out. Bribing the mares has been finished. Very, very nice. And household regulations. That stuff seems okay. All this stuff just seems okay. It's not super great. Noble entitlements. Noble Entitlements. Ooh, where's Noble Entitlements? Ah, down there. Fund the urban development. Instead of focusing on the savages to the south, they're subsidized as a capital. We can help the cities of the empire. Oh, oh, victory on the border. Great that. With merry moods and hardened hearts, our brave Atlan warriors return from the conquest of Hela Uchban Tsaun. Though this conquest was not without loss, it brought great gain and everlasting struggle with our eternal rivals. Bring back the supposed from Zochicalco. Political power, army XP. And we get more daily political power. Great to building less war support, but that's okay with me. Let's go grab some clay working. Thank you. And some plant cultivation. That was actually really, really good. Actually, that was so good. I'm going to throw you guys back here now. And you're going to need a new general. Oh, Armando Ocetello. Uh, aren't you uh, someone else? Actually, I'm going to promote you. Because then you'll be over here. There you go. Cool. We can let time go on. Now we have one full board. I like this. Oh, there goes Cowboy Country. Actually, before we see that, before they walk and die, yeah. That's extremely hard to play as. That'd be a single episode if I ever played as Cowboy Country. Two to, yeah, that's impossible to play. Two six divisions versus the Legion. Oof. And that's on Historical by July 18th, 2276. Yeah, I don't think that, anything that's possible to actually win that one. Um, where would the next flower war actually be? Oh my goodness, 140 days. Are actually getting, oh, we're getting points, 08 political power, not bad, not bad. Begin reforms, well, since it's there, we might as well, right? And now we have no political power. Clamp down on autonomy still. So, fund urban development, which is what we're doing. Next up, we'll go ahead and do the princess, princes of Tepic. Tepic's princes are among the richest of the wastes. If we work with them, we can use their wealth for the empire. And probably off screen, I'll probably do the Guadalajara Technocracy. Guadalajara holds some of the greatest repositories of pre-war learning, the schools where students recite the syntax of Robco reprogramming. We can encourage their growth. And here we have the story of the Atslan operative. There's a campfire story often told amongst its ans, and the more daring of our slaves about an Atslan operative's attempts to assassinate an Itzan general. One day, a member of La Fuerza decided to kill one of the Itzan generals. He traveled to Itza, found his home, and spent a week scoping it out. He surveyed every possible escape route, studied the general secretary, or security, and learned his routine adamantly. After all this, he contacted his boss and told him all he would need to carry out the assassination is a tiny pistol. Really? His boss asked, astonished. Nevertheless, the agent assured him that it would be more more than enough. He had learned everything there was to know about the general, and there was certainly no way for him to fail. Finally, the agent approached the general just outside his home. General, general, he said, shouting and waving his arms, I come to challenge you to honorable single combat in the name of uh, Nueva Atsan. Needless to say, the guards made short work of him after that. How embarrassing. And here we are once more in another flower war border battle skirmish thingamabob in which... Are we attacking or are we defending? It looks like we're defending against... Yeah, we're defending against the Chichen Itza, which where uh, not much, not many things are going on. I'll be honest. Like, 
there's no divisions. They are attacking us, so... And our dude is sick. Raphael is a little sick. We're finishing up Guadalajara technocracy, so... Um... Oh, Legion joined the Legion. Pretty normal. And we shall do another focus, such as... Guadalajara... University or topic? Um, I'll do this one because it's shorter. Guadalajara schools can be formalized into a center of higher learning. We will be the envy of everyone, even Vault City. Well, I like how they're t getting tactics done, but they got no one down there. And we also, I'm investing in our uh, little intelligence agency, in which we have Intel Advantage, which is very good. Let's go and grab some smoke signals as well, but kind of wonder when this is about. Oh, there we go, Victor on the border. Bring back the supposed Zochicalco. More political power, more arm XP, and I did want to choose this one together. Introduce new recon techniques. Our operatives use outdated methods when scouting enemy formations and terrain. This often leads to subpar intelligence and even sometimes being spotted by the enemy. Plus 10% intel from operatives in the field. Nice. Anti partisan training. Uh, as the most formidable army in Mesoamerica. We're no strangers to administering conquered land. Nevertheless, our heavy handed tactics do not always produce the best outcomes. It may be best for us to reflect on how to best use our agents to short our empire. Cool, we'll try that. It costs more political power, but at least we're getting 0 .08 every single day. We have that, and we shall do the next focus after this, the Tepic Noble Armories. One reason to be friends with the Princes of Tepic is to get access to their armories. Know your enemy. Bulletin from our great leader. Citizens, our enemies lurk on every corner. The Colomte, the armies, and their spies all seek to destroy us. In order to defeat this menace on our border, we need only to work together against them. All that are required is that you trust your neighbors and watch their every move. The Atsan have laid spies throughout our territory, hoping to find weak minds that can fall prey to their propaganda and lies, and only neighborhood vigilance can stop them. Whatever happens, remember, an Itsan sympathizer is an Itsan in disguise. Let's root them out, and we're almost done with our typical noble armories. As well as eh, about a month left for smoke signals for our research, in which we still need to get another general down here, which we just can't afford because we don't have any political power, which really just, just really really sucks. I'd love to have a new leader here, but obviously we gotta wait. And we'll finish this episode with noble entitlements. The way to save Atlan society is to give more power to its best and brightest, who are also the richest. In which you get less resource efficiency gain, more we lose consumer goods factories, more construction speed, research speed output. And slightly better consumer goods factories, but that's going to be it for today, my friends. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow after we click on Reach Parity through other means, as well as we'll have a lot more wars, or maybe even a big old war with the Chuchin itself. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.